This is the second video, Sequences and Series, Fibonacci and the Golden Ratio. This video is going to be a little different than some of the others. There may not be all that many notes that you're going to take. I'm just going to talk about these two concepts, the uh, Fibonacci sequence and the Golden Ratio and how they're related. So uh, sit back and enjoy the video, but don't feel like you have to copy every single thing down. Having just said that, you're going to want to write this down. <laughs> this is the Fibonacci sequence. I'm going to write the numbers and I want you as I write the numbers to begin to think about how I'm getting the next number. So the next number is 2, then 3, then 5, then 8, then 13, then 21, then 34, then 55. Maybe by now you're starting to see a pattern. The next is 89. See if you can go higher. 144. Oh, it's getting tougher. 233, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so this is the Fibonacci sequence. And you find the Fibonacci sequence by taking, you always start with 1 and 1, and then the next number is found by doing 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, 8 plus 11, and that's how I started getting here, and then I had to go 55 and 89 is 144, and I think I've got that right. Um, but you could do anything with that sequence. It's taking the first two, and then adding successive ones to continue on. All right, so if we wanted to write a recursive rule for the Fibonacci sequence, remember that recursive uses the previous term to write a rule. So for instance, a sub 1 is just going to be 1. The second term of the Fibonacci sequence is also 1. And then what we do after that is we're going to add the previous terms together. So if I have to get the next term, this is a sub n is the next term, I'm going to take the two previous terms. So I'm going to do a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2. So that's one way to write the recursive form of the Fibonacci sequence. Another way is if I start out with um, a is equal to a sub n minus 1. So in other words, I'm just playing with the notation, right? So if I say n, a to the n minus 1, the previous term to that is a sub n, and the previous term to that one is what? Oh, sorry, a to the n minus 2, and the previous to that one is a to the n minus 3. Now, if I said a to the k plus 1, because it doesn't really matter if it's n or k or i or j, whatever variable that is, then the one previous to that is a sub k, and the one previous to that one is a sub k minus 1. So using the recursive formula, any of these, you could find an infinite number, but any of those could be a valid recursive rule for a Fibonacci sequence. Of course, remember that a sub 1 and a sub 2 have to be defined in order to use this formula. Now the numbers in the Fibonacci sequence appear in nature and one of these places that it appears is in the spirals formed by flowers. Um, if you'll look here, you can kind of see that there are spirals and people actually count these. And the counts of them are some of the numbers from the Fibonacci sequence, 35 or um, 55 or uh, 34, 21, 13, and you can see them kind of here. Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio are also related. Um, you can see here that in a conch shell, um, the spiral is formed by making a rectangle, dividing the rectangle, dividing the rectangle, dividing, dividing, dividing into different areas. And you can see that these are 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 13. These are the numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. And you can kind of count the petals this one has eight petals, this one has five petals, these are all numbers from the Fibonacci sequence. 
um, and so the spirals, uh, some Fibonacci, sometimes they say that the Fibonacci sequence starts with zero. Zero, one, and then zero plus one is one, and da, 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 da. but you're still going to have to define two terms. One of the coolest things is that the Pascal's triangle also has the Fibonacci sequence in it. And if you actually add the rows of the um, Pascal's triangle, and if you'll remember, Pascal's triangle starts with 1, 1, 1, and then start with a 1, add the two ones together to get 2, and end with a 1. Start with a 1, add the numbers, add the numbers, end with a 1. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, and it continues on. You can go on forever. But if you add them, like if you add 1, this is 1, this is two ones, this is 3, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 3, 1 is um, adding that way gets you the Fibonacci sequence. So you're adding uh, this way. Like that. Anyway, so that you get uh, the Fibonacci sequence. Some other cool places um, where you can find the sequence are in the bones of the hand. If you look at the skeleton, you can see that the ratio is 2 to 3 to 5 to 8. Those are the first few numbers in the Fibonacci sequence, which is kind of cool. And then also music can be written using, um, this is 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and you can see the different notes. And there were some composers who actually wrote um, music using um, both the Fibonacci and also Phi, the golden mean, uh, to write music. Music and math are very closely related. And then pineapples. Honestly, the pineapples are harder to see, but there are ways to uh, count the spirals in a um, in a pineapple. I almost got thrown out of a grocery store one time doing this, picking up different pineapples and counting them, but you can use that as well. Okay, this is the next place where you'd probably want to take notes, and we're going to talk about something called the golden ratio. The golden ratio, and this is the Greek symbol phi, shown at left, is a special number approximately equal to 1.618. This ratio of 1 to 1.618 is called the golden ratio. It appears many times in geometry, art, architecture, and other areas. I'm going to show you some here in a minute. The idea behind it is if you have a, a segment and you divide it into a part that's A long and B long and add them together, if you take the longer part divided by the smaller part is also equal to the whole length divided by the longer part. And so if you put actual numbers for A and B in here, you would get an approximation of 1.618 or phi. Uh, the Parthenon in Greece has been built with this ratio in mind. Um, most of the time when you ask someone to draw a rectangle, they'll draw one this shape. And this is the golden rectangle, and we actually approximate it. It, it seems to be very symmetrical or pleasing to the human eye or what we like. Um, there are some other names for this golden ratio, the golden section, the golden mean, the golden number, divine proportion, divine section, golden proportion. It is said that a lot of the architecture of the ancient times uh, were based on this ratio and using this golden rectangle to, to make figures that were very pleasing. It's also said that phi is said to have figured in the construction of the Great Pyramids. Um, it says that 1 to 0 0.61803 is supposed to be an aesthetically ideal way to divide a line. Composers like Beethoven and Mozart have used the golden section in their works. And um, Fibonacci and Euclid also make mention of the golden ratio or the golden mean. Um, the Greek architects used some of the plans for their most famous temples and buildings like the Parthenon. We don't know if they used the golden section in their plans. Um, there is a book written by uh, an Italian writer back in the 1400s called The Divine Proportion, and it contains drawings made by Leonardo da Vinci of the five platonic solids. It was probably da Vinci who first called it the golden section, using all, he said it in Latin. And phi has also been found as early as 1600 BC on the rind papyrus, which is one of the oldest mathematical works in existence. So this is another part of ancient mathematics.
that's been around um, from the beginning. You can actually use the um, Fibonacci sequence to find an approximation of the golden ratio. Now, if you'll remember, before we get too much further, phi is approximately 1.618033988, da 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 da, right? And it's the ratio of that to 1. So to find the golden ratio, I say it is found by taking, um, you know, the Fibonacci is 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, uh, 34, 55, and so on. If I took uh, 2 and divided it by 1, I'm going to get 0.5. If I get uh, 3 divided by 2, I get 1.5. If I do 5 divided by 3 and so on, 8 divided by 5, 13 divided by 8. If I keep doing successive um, divisions of the Fibonacci numbers in order, eventually I'm going to get 1.618, and that's how they're related. So the Fibonacci sequence can be actually used to find the golden ratio. So in class, we're going to do a few more exercises. One of the things we're going to look at Fibonacci um, whose actual name was not Fibonacci, we'll talk about this later, um, came across this uh, sequence looking at rabbits, breeding of rabbits. And so we're going to have an exercise where we look at that. We're also going to approximate the uh, phi using our calculator. And so we're going to have some other exercises. These are just kind of fascinating numbers, and I hope that you in this unit will begin to see numbers in a little bit different way. So um, I will see you in class.